Good morning and welcome to our online Sunday morning service. Usually I get the opportunity to lead all of you in worship on a Sunday morning, but this past week I was able to sit in the congregation and enjoy worship led by Paul and Melinda. As we continue in this time of worship, I just want to encourage you this morning to just truly connect with the one who wants to connect with you. We did one of my favorite songs this past week, Greater You Lord, and it's a perfect opportunity to just thank him for everything he does and everything that he is. So let's join in the time of worship this morning, followed by a message from Pastor Bob in our current series, Blessed Assurance, as well as some announcements from Pastor Jay, and you can find out exactly what's happening right here at Eagle's Nest. I'll see you soon. Stand up. 
good morning. Woo! I hope you're awake now. You're in God's house this morning. You're in the presence of a living God who gave his son for you. I don't know any other way to react than to sing that love, to sing that praise, to sing that hallelujah back to him. I don't know where you are this morning. A lot of people in here, so there's a lot of stories. So wherever you are, stand in the midst of whatever you're going through, good or bad, and let's declare his name in this place together, okay? Are you with me? Yes.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service. Most of us are pretty much done with winter and looking forward to the soon arrival of spring. Springtime reminds us that we live in a beautiful world. Very soon the grass will start growing, the trees will begin budding, and the flowers will bloom. And flowers are absolutely beautiful. My favorite flowers are roses. So when I buy roses for my wife, Patty, they make me wax poetical. Roses are red, violets are blue. These roses were expensive. That's how much I love you. And Patty responds about the same way you did. <laughs> and so maybe I should rewrite that. You know, Jesus spoke of flowers in the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew chapter 6, 28 through 30, he says, So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. Jesus calls a flower like this, the grass of the field. Then he tells us to consider, to think about something. He says, these flowers, they don't labor. The, the Greek word, by the way, for that means to work hard. It's not just, just work, it means to work hard. They don't work hard, nor do they spin. And yet he says they're more beautiful than anything Solomon in all of his glory ever made. And he tells us something else. He says they were created by God. This morning we continue in our series, Blessed Assurance, Eight Reasons You Can Trust the Bible. So far we've seen that biblical Christianity is the mother of modern science. We've also seen that the Big Bang Theory confirms what the Bible has always told us. There was a beginning. The third reason you can trust your Bible is called the Goldilocks Principle. Not only is this world beautiful, and it is beautiful, it is finely tuned. The parameters that make life possible are literally on a razor's edge. We all remember Goldilocks and the three bears. She went for a walk in the forest one day and she came upon the bear's house. The porridge was too hot, too cold, and then just right. The chair was too big, too small, then just right. The bed was too hard, too soft, then just right. Well, what scientists are finding out is that our universe has been made just right for life to exist. This is called the Goldilocks Principle. It's almost as if the universe were designed to do what it does, and that is to make life on Earth possible. In fact, the most famous atheist in the world, Christopher Hitchens, when asked which is the best argument for the existence of God, he said this. He said it's the fine-tuned argument, the fine-tuning, that one degree, well, one degree, one hair of difference, even though it doesn't prove, doesn't prove a designer, you have to spend time thinking about it, he says, working on it. It's not a trivial argument. We all say that. And by the way, when he says we all say that, he was speaking of the other three, four horsemen of the new atheist apocalypse, Richard Dawkins, Daniel Dennett, and Sam Harris. Christopher Hitchens is telling us the fine two argument is evidence for God. And it goes like this. The universe is just right for life. When it comes to the universe, the porridge is neither too hot nor too cold. The chair is neither too big nor too small. The bed is neither too hard or too soft. For instance, there's just the right amount of stuff in the universe. Have you ever complained about having too much stuff? My dad did. He often got tired of the clutter in his garage. His garage was his space. And he often would get tired of it, of how much stuff, you know, like bicycles and things we kids with. He, we had seven kids, so we had a lot of stuff. But he'd get tired of it. Every once in a while, he would go on a throwout binge. I remember one day I went into the garage because I wanted to get my tennis racket but I couldn't find it. I looked all through the garage and I finally asked my dad, I said, dad, where's my tennis racket? He said he threw it away. <laughs> he got tired of the clutter and he would do this periodically because he just got tired of the stuff. Now scientists call the stuff in the universe matter. Matter is the stuff that Goldilocks porridge, her chair and bed were made out of. And matter is what the vis visible universe is made of. And here's what's amazing. Science teaches us that there is exactly the right amount of stuff. There's just the right amount of matter in the universe for life to exist. There is exactly the right amount. And let's define what exactly means for you. Caltech astrophysicist Hugh Ross says exactly means within a dime. He states that if mass, and mass is how they measure matter, if mass, if the mass of the universe was changed by a dime's amount, at the beginning of the universe, it would have destroyed all possibility of life forming. You know, the universe is really big. It has a lot of stuff in it. It contains 10 to the 80th power of atoms. That's 10 followed by 80 zeros. 
It contains two trillion galaxies, each of which contains 100 billion stars. And yet science tells us that if all this stuff wasn't exactly measured out within a dime's amount, we wouldn't be here. And so science is just confirming what the Bible has already told us, that the stuff in the universe was measured out just right. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 40, verse 12, it says, Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hands? Measured heaven with a span. A span, by the way, is the width of your hand. And calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. Weighed the mountains and scales and the hills in the balance. Measured, calculated, and weighed are all terms that God tells us that God measured out how much stuff is in the universe. The stuff in the universe isn't too hot. It's not too cold. It's just right. Another example of how finely tuned the universe is, the Goldilocks principle, is that there's just the right ratio of forces holding the universe together. You don't need to know what they are, but here they are anyway, for those that want to know. First is gravity. Now, we all deal with gravity. Every time we get on a scale, gravity is not our friend. Then there's the electromagnetic force. This is electricity. We're grateful for this one every time we plug in our TV. Then there's weak nuclear force which makes our sun, nuclear fusion. We all like this when we go to the beach. And then there's strong nuclear force. Think of a nuclear power plant. This is what gets our electric from the power plant to our our home so we can use our LED TV. What's important to understand is that these forces have to be just right. They have to have just the right ratios or the universe wouldn't exist. Now, I'm not going to bore you with a lot of stats, though that they're out there. I'll I'll just let the late Stephen Hawking put it in context for us when he says the remarkable fact is that the values of these numbers, which he's talking about the ratios of these forces, seem to have been finally adjusted to make possible development of life. In other words, the the ratios of the four forces that hold our universe together and make our universe possible are not too hot, they're not too cold, they're not too hard, they're not too soft, they're not too big, they're not too small, they're just right. Let me give you another illustration uh, for the more scientifically minded out there. The ratio between the gravitational force, gravity, and the electromagnetic force must be exactly correct for life to exist in the universe. The ratio between them must be exact down to one part in 10 to the 40th power. That's 10 followed by 40 zeros. There's only 10 followed by 80 zeros, atoms in the whole universe, And they're saying that the ratio between these two forces have to be with 10 followed by 40 zeros. Astrophysicist Hugh Ross says it like this. Imagine covering the contiguous United States and Alaska with dimes. I'm into dimes today, by the way. When you're done, cover Canada in dimes too. Then cover Mexico Mexico and half of Central America. Now repeat the process until the dimes are piled up to the top of Mount McKinley, which is 20,000 feet. Then continue to the dimes are 12 times higher than Mount McKinley, about 240,000 feet. Then continue until the dimes are 5,000 times higher, bumping into the moon, that's 240,000 miles away. Do this with about a billion more continents the size of North America. Then tell a friend that somewhere in all these dimes there's a red one, and they have to find it. That is how small the ratio of difference between the gravitational and (laughs) electromagnetic forces have to be for life to exist. Now, how could this universe come into existence like this by chance? It couldn't. It defies all the odds. The Bible tells us it didn't. It tells us it was created by something, but rather by someone. And that someone is Jesus Christ. It is He, it is Jesus that determined the four forces of nature which hold the universe together. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 says, speaking of Jesus Christ, by the way, says, who being the brightness of his glory, God's glory, and the expressed image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. The Bible tells us that Jesus is upholding all things. He's upholding the world by his word. And that word is how much of these forces are going to be and how this all stuff holds together. It's a little bit beyond my pay grade, but folks, when you look into it, it is pretty amazing how all of life stands on a razor's edge. And in these troubling times, these uncertain times, isn't it a comforting thought to know that it's not the government holding all things together, that there's somebody else that's kind of holding the world together, that is holding the world together? That's a very comforting thought for me, especially in these troubling times. But not only is the universe just right for life, 
you know, the universe as a whole, the earth is also just right for life. Recently, my wife and I had a Goldilocks type experience. We needed a new bed, so off to the store we went. When we got there, we asked the salesperson to show us some beds. And I told this, the person, I said, I've got back issues and my bed has to be just right. So she took me to the best bed that they had in the store. It was firm enough because I like a firm bed, but it had one of those soft toppers on it. And then they showed us another bed without a topper on it. Now, Patty loved the first bed. My wife, Patty, loved the first bed, but it was $6,000. <laughs> so I got thinking, maybe we need to look at some cheaper beds. Now, so we looked at a cheaper bed, and it didn't have a topper on it, but it was nice and firm. So I talked Patty out of the $6,000 bed to get the cheaper bed because, you know, you can lose a lot of sleep when you spend $6,000 on a bed. And so even though it really had nothing to do with how expensive it was, we decided to go with the cheaper bed because we thought it was just right. Well, the first night we slept on it, we both agreed. Too hard. <laughs> so out to the store we went, and we bought a three-inch microphone topper. After not one night on it, I looked at her and said, too soft. And so we went out to the store again and bought another one an inch, an inch and a half topper. After that couple, couple nights on that one, that didn't work for me at all either. So we cut the three-inch topper in half, put one half on her side of the bed, and I'm sleeping on the original bed. And it's now just right because it kind of worked in. When it comes to the earth, folks, it's just right. It's not too hard. It's not too soft. It's just right to sustain life. In fact, this is called the anthropic principle. Anthropic comes from the Greek word anthropos, which means man. The anthropic principle teaches that the world is finely tuned, just rightly tuned on a razor's edge to support human life. Just consider water. Water makes life on earth possible. And the Bible tells us that our world began covered with it. In Genesis 1, 1 and 2, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. What's amazing is that the qualities of water, which with our world began, are just right for life on earth. We tend to take water for granted. And one of the reasons we do this is we have so much of it. But because we have so much of it here in America, we don't fully appreciate how special water really is. For instance, unlike almost every other substance in the universe, which gets denser and heavier when it cools and chills down and freezes, water doesn't. Water goes against the flow, so to speak. It gets lighter when it freezes. Now, that might seem like, not seem like a big idea, but it really is, because life on this planet would be impossible without that quality. For if ice did not float, lakes and other bodies of water would freeze from the bottom up, and this would completely destroy life's habitat, and all the life in them would die. But ice becomes lighter, and therefore it floats to the top. And if it floats, it all, and as it floats, it also creates an insulation barrier protecting the water beneath it from the cold. And then there's water's freezing and boiling points. Because of the size of its molecules, the freezing point and boiling point of water are not what scientists would expect. Are you ready for this? Water shouldn't freeze at 32 degrees. It should boil. But it doesn't boil at 32 degrees. It boils at 212 degrees. And water should freeze at, 100, at negative 148 degrees. But water doesn't freeze at negative 148 degrees. It freezes at 32 degrees instead. And if water didn't freeze at 32 degrees there wouldn't be any water on the earth because it would evaporate through the atmosphere. Instead, as water evaporates, it freezes again in the atmosphere and falls back to the surface of the earth. It's almost as if someone measured the waters in the hollow of his hand. Another amazing quality about water is its ability to dissolve nearly anything. For this re reason, water is called the universal solvent. A solvent is used to dissolve things. And we, were, we are reminded of water's ability to dissolve things every time we put sugar in our coffee or our tea. You know, you put your first scoop of sugar in your tea or your coffee, you stir it and it dissolves. You put your second, your third, your fourth, and if you're like me, your fifth and your sixth, and you stir it, it still dissolves. I like sugar. And even the great theologian Mary Poppins says a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down in the most delightful way. But back to water. As water flows erodes rocks and soil. It dissolves them. And so water carries both dissolved and undissolved minerals and metals as it flows. 
These minerals and metals feed the many plants and animals, and if it was not for water's ability to dissolve these minerals, these plants and animals would have no way of getting these very vital ingredients. You know, when I was studying this and I learned all this stuff, it made me take another look at what Genesis 2.10 says when it says, now a river went out of Eden to water the garden. Um, from there, it parted into four river heads. In other words, when God first created the world and put man in the garden of Eden, there was a river that ran to the whole earth so that it could take nutrients and minerals to the whole earth. I mean, I've got to relook at that because water is so central to life on the planet. There are other properties of water that are quite fascinating and central to the existence of life. These two, however, make the point. The universe and our planet are both finely tuned to support life. If our planet, for instance, if our planet didn't spin on its axis like it does, one side of the, that got the sunlight would be scorched and the dark side would be frozen. There would be nobody here. If the earth were any farther away from the sun, the planet would freeze. If the earth was any closer to the sun, it would be uninhabitable. If the earth were any smaller, our magnetic field would be weaker and we would die of radiation poisoning because it's, it's the magnetic field that keeps radiation in the, in, the, in, in the universe, in the solar system from coming down and burning us up. It protects us. If the earth were any larger, we couldn't breathe. Gravity would become so heavy, we couldn't actually breathe. <laughs> Gravity, folks, we take this stuff for granted. And folks, I could go on and on here. These are the things I was reading as I studied for this series. It's quite amazing how finely tuned our universe and our earth really is. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to the fine tuning of the universe, there's an elephant in the room. Mikey, Michael Bay, he puts it this way in his book, uh, Darwin's Black Box. He says, imagine a room in which a body lies crushed flat as a pancake. A dozen detectives crawl around examining the floor with magnifying glasses for any clue to the identity of the perpetrator. In the middle of the room next to the body stands a large gray elephant. The detectives carefully avoid bumping into the pachyderm's leg as they crawl and never even glance at it once. Over time, the detectives get frustrated with their lack of progress but resolutely press on, looking even more closely at the floor. He goes on to say, you see, textbooks say detectives must get their man, so they never consider elephants. The elephant is labeled intelligent design. Here's the truth, folks. There are just too many coincidences to believe that the universe happened by accident. Someone had to make the porridge. Someone had to build the chair. Someone had to make the bed. And the late Henry, I'm going to get his name wrong, Marganu, <laughs> a distinguished Yale professor of quantum physics, tells us who finally tuned the universe when he says, there is a mind which is responsible for the laws of nature and the existence of nature and the whole universe. And this is consistent with everything we know. Science has inadvertently stumbled upon the elephant in the room. And the self-described atheist physicist George Greenstein has confessed that the thought insistently arises that some supernatural agency, or rather agency with a capital A, must be involved. It is possible that suddenly, without intending to, we have stumbled upon scientific proof for the existence of a supreme being. And as Norman Geisler says in his book, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, it isn't a lack of evidence that keeps people from believing God. It's a matter of will. People are willfully blind, unwilling to even look at the evidence for God. He goes on to say, belief requires assent not only of the mind, but also of the will. He says, while many non-Christians have honest intellectual questions, and they do, he says, we have found that many more seem to have volitional resistance to Christianity. Consider the famous atheist Friedrich Nietzsche, who is most famous for saying God is dead, meaning that he's a figment of our imagination. He later went crazy and went into an insane asylum because that's where it's going to lead. The evidence is so piling up and so there, it takes a willful blindness to disbelieve it. He illustrates willful blindness when he says, if one were to prove this God of the Christians to us, we should be even less able to believe in him. It is our preference that decides against Christianity, not our arguments. Now, Nietzsche's been quoted by many, but he's admitting that he's willfully ignorant, that he does not want to see, due to his preference, the evidence that there is for the existence of God. And again, this simply confirms what the Bible has always said. 
2 Peter 3, 5 says, For this they willfully forget. They willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Right back to Genesis chapter 1. By which the world then existed, perished, being flooded with water. Peter's saying the same thing that Nietzsche was saying. People willfully forget. They don't want to look at the evidence, but there's plenty of it. And what do they forget? That God created the world and that he finally tuned, tuned the world so that life could exist. So as we wrap this up this morning, Goldilocks and Three Bears lets us know that we can trust the Bible. The universe isn't too hot. It's not too cold. It's just right for life to exist. The earth isn't too big. It's not too small. It's just right for us to live on it. And scientists have stumbled upon the elephant in the room. There is a creator, just as the Bible tells us. And the Bible also tells us that we can know this creator and that this creator became one of us in Jesus Christ. And he died on the cross for our sins and he rose again on Easter Sunday. And he now sits at the right hand of God the Father. The Bible says, ever making intercession for us according to the will of God. In other words, Jesus Christ right now is praying for you and he's also holding the universe and our world together. I know, folks, there's a lot going on in our world, and there's a lot of uncertainty, and there's a lot of reason to be anxious. But it gives me great comfort, and it will give you, as you look at the Scripture and the Bible, as science confirms what the Bible says, that the universe was finely tuned by God. Our Creator, is whole, He created the world, and He's holding the world together, and He can hold your world together, and He can hold mine. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You that you love us so much and that you love us so much that you created a beautiful universe and a world for us to live in. And Lord, we pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, Father, as we go through difficult times and uncertain, an uncertain season, we ask you for the grace and the comfort of knowing that, Lord, you are holding things together and we don't need to fear the unraveling of things. We just need to put our faith in you. Father, help us as we study science and as we study scripture to see the truth. And the truth is, is that you love us and that you're not scared and you're not anxious, but you have the power to bring us through and hold our world together. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Now join us in song followed by Pastor Jay and what's happening here at The Nest. I hope to see you next week.
by the grace in his eyes if grace is an ocean we're all sinking so heaven meets earth like a sloppy wet kiss and my heart turns violently inside of my When we look at the vastness, the enormity of creation, the intricate details that you can find when you start to realize just how big this world is, look through a telescope into the night sky, watch a documentary about the earth, go up on the highest mountains and explore the depths of the ocean. It becomes quite clear that something, no someone, must have designed it. It's a beautiful world and it was intricately and intentionally put together. God's word said it was God. He's the creator there in the beginning, forming this earth and everything living upon it. And that that same God desires a personal relationship with you and me. Take comfort in the blessed assurance of being able to put your trust in him and in his word. Well, hello and welcome to the Eagle's Nest online campus. Thank you for joining us here online Every week, both during our live service and right here online, we welcome new friends to the ministry. If this is the first time you're watching us, we'd like to offer a special welcome to you. Guests, we would love to hear your thoughts on how you found out about us. And if you've enjoyed the service, send us an email saying hi to hello at eaglesnest.ch. 
Please also know that you're invited and welcome to join us when we meet together on Sundays at 930 right here in the building. We would love to meet all of you in person. For your awareness, our online campus has multiple ways that you can get your Eagle's Nest content in. We encourage you to listen every week to our online messages, enjoy our recorded worship sets, and stay connected with Eagle's Nest announcements. For more, you can visit our website, eaglesnest.ch, find us on Facebook and Instagram, and please, pretty please, subscribe to the ever-growing YouTube channel. If you feel a little bit off today, maybe it's because you forgot today was daylight savings time. Hopefully you remembered to spring forward an hour. If not, just look at your clock and remember that it's actually one hour later than you might have thought it was. There's a lot of activity happening on our campus, and I'll give you as much of a summary as I can. Please note if you're interested in attending any of our events or if you have questions about them, all you have to do is send us an email with those questions or with your input to hello at eaglesnest.ch and we'll find the right person to connect you with. Eagles Nest Men has multiple activities and connection events happening all the time. And I love that they have such clever names. Look at some of these dudes at the diner, men with pins, men with guns, and much more. Guys, if you're interested in hanging out with us, you're welcome to join in. And not to be outmatched, our women's ministry known as Divine Design also has multiple connection points, Bible studies and game nights and larger gatherings. You can get connected with other ladies here at Eagles Nest as we all strive to build relationships with one another. Eagles Nest Kids is growing and loving every opportunity they get to engage with your kids. If you're interested in serving or volunteering, we provide background checks to every volunteer that serves to ensure a loving and safe environment for every Eagles Nest kid that attends here. Parents, if you haven't tried Eagles Nest Kids yet, we invite all of our young families with kids ages nursery to fifth grade to try Eagles Nest Kids during the 930 service. Older students, you really ought to try Eagles Nest Youth. We have multiple avenues for students in middle school and in high school grades to hang out together, learn more about their faith, and have fun while doing it. Middle school students, 6th through 8th grades, meet during the live 930 service on Sundays. And there are other fun events happening for middle schoolers as well throughout the week. High school students, you have your own thing happening every month here at Eagles Nest called Cathedral along with other hangout opportunities for high schoolers during the week. There is a major youth event that I'm supposed to tell you all about. It's coming up this week. If you haven't heard, the next cathedral will be an all-nighter. This Friday evening, March 18th, will be a very special cathedral. This cathedral is open to middle school and high school students and any of their friends who wish to attend. This month only, middle schoolers can attend cathedral and hang out late into the evening. It's going to be a fun night packed with worship, games, small group conversations, food, and fun, and a special message from our friend Mark Dickey at 88.7 The Bridge. Parents of middle schoolers, please note the middle school students will need to be picked up by midnight on Friday, March 18th. High school students will be staying the entire night, if they wish, until 7.30 a.m. Saturday morning. We'll have security on site. Students will need to sign up and fill out some paperwork, so please ensure you get all of that done prior to attending. If you're interested at all, once again, email us at hello at eaglesnest.ch. Our next Do Good opportunity has already begun. We are assembling community appreciation baskets. Those baskets will be delivered with our love and thanks to the local organizations and businesses that serve our local community. Police, fire department, cheer center, and local schools, as an example. We're requesting donations of these items up on the screen. If you'd like to partner with us, you can drop those items off on Sundays or to the church office during the week. This do good opportunity will run until April 3rd. Also, if you have a passion or an interest in serving in future do good events and campaigns, would you reach out to us? We would love to have you join our outreach team. We want to say thank you to all of you who generously give to Eagles Nest Ministries. We can't do what we do without you. If you're interested in giving, you can give while you're here in the building or you can mail in gifts using the address at the bottom of our website or give online anytime through Pushpayer Realm at eaglesnest.ch. Well, we are here to serve and minister to any needs that you might have. If you need advice or prayer or you have questions about your faith journey, if you're interested in water baptism or, or for any other reason, we're here to connect with you. We ask you to reach out to us. It's very simple with an email to hello at eaglesnest.ch. We pray for you and your families regularly. And we pray God speaks to you through the various avenues of this ministry. Please remember, be kind to one another. Pray for our leaders. And if you're willing, be a part of what we're doing here as we strive to worship, connect, and serve together. 
Thank you for joining us in our series, Blessed Assurance. We encourage you to share these messages with a friend. Please like, follow, and subscribe to our online campus. We hope to see all of you back here next week as we uncover more truths, reasons why you can trust your Bible. Take care, everyone. Have a great week.